All right, guys, hope everybody had a good, safe holiday weekend, 4th of July. I know I did. I had a good time, spent some time with the family and hung out, uh, you know, grilled out, you know, barbecued and hung out at the pool and all that fun stuff. So touch base real quick about what's going on out there. Not a lot's changed since the last time. You know, it's summertime, it's July, it's hot, it's humid. And we have had some really muggy days. Matter of fact, I'm in here in the air conditioner in the shop um, this morning actually watching uh, today's the first day of the MLF at Sturgeon Bay. So I'm, I'm catching up on some of that. But uh, overall fishing's been, uh, everybody knows if you've fished out here at all, you know that the, the fishing's been a challenge this year. It's no, no secret. Um, still a few fish to be caught. There's the, the bait fish that I talked about last time are everywhere. They're up on the bank, they're starting to migrate out offshore. So for you offshore guys, you hard-headed guys that won't do anything else and all you wanna do is get out there and beat around and fish deep, uh, you've probably found that you're not gonna find a lot of schools of fish. You're gonna find places that's got one, two, three, five if you're lucky. Um, but you're fishing wood, you know, stumps, brush piles, and you know just targeting a bass here a bass there you know one fish here one fish there kind of stuff and usually nine times out of ten if you get bit it's a pretty good one um for me personally it's been about the bait and the mayflies up on the bank if you get out there first thing in the morning you'll see that there's still a good mayfly hatch going on you know i don't i'm not a biologist i'm no expert at that but i, I you know one day i'll see a lot more than i do the day before and i don't know why that is but uh, i don't know if it's one thing that if it lasts like for several weeks in a row or what but Anyway, that's, that's what I've been doing is chasing the mayflies. And what you'll do is you'll get out there on those gravel banks or places where there's overhanging limbs along. You'll see a lot of like bluffy rock and stuff like that are kind of key places. Um, you get out there first thing in the morning and you'll see those mayflies up in the trees and you'll see bluegill popping them. And what those fish are doing, a lot of those better quality fish, if you, if you get lucky enough to find some quality, they'll be up running those bluegill. And I talked about this last time, but just a popping style bait, uh, the Rico, uh, the old school Rico has been a good one because it's a little bitty small popping style bait with a feather on the back and that feather is key. This is another one. This is a bluegill colored um, popping style bait. It's the Splashback 70 from Six Cents that I've been playing with and it's got the, the feather tied on the back and I think that's kind of key because that uh, that subtle bait, we've had a lot of mornings where it's dead slick, and anytime it's dead slick, I'll pick up something a little more subtle like a pop art or a popping style bait that you can throw out there and you just wanna fish it super, super slow. And it kinda mimics those mayflies back there, you know, and sometimes those bluegill come up and pop, you'll actually even catch a few bluegill on it. But for the most part, those bass, those better quality bass are actually feeding on the bluegill that's feeding on those mayflies from what I've seen. Uh, I have caught a good number of fish, you know, again in the, you know, 12, 14 inch size, but one morning you'll go out and you'll catch, uh, you'll catch several shorts and then the next morning you may catch mostly keepers. So it's, it's just been kind of up or down. Um, always have this time of year, late summer, you're starting to see some schooling activity. I've actually seen a few white bass jumps always have a, um, a walking style bait, you know, a, a spook or any of your um, walking style baits. This is the uh, Dogma from Six Cents that I throw. This is a white, it's a bone white color. Uh, it's got the feather on the back. But anytime I'm out late summer like this, fish are coming up, they're schooling, always have that laying on the front deck. Um, the shatter up on the bank, they disappeared for a few days. I thought they were all moving out deep and then they showed back up on the bank. So what you've got out there I actually reached out to Adam Martin, our local fisheries biology guy here uh, locally. And what we're seeing out there, all the fry, if you've been out at all, you've seen all the fry out there. Um, you're seeing an emerald shiner and you're seeing what they call silver sides. And from my understanding, they're not as nutritious as a shad, like a thread fin or a gizzard shad. Um, that It's still early enough in, you know, in their studies that they're not 100% confident on what everything is, but for the most part, what you're seeing is the, the emerald shiners and the silver sides. That's what the fish have survived on over the last few years. You're catching a lot of those 12 to 14 inch size fish. The good news is they've got something neat for the next few years, and that's what they've survived on the last couple of years, you know, due to the, the thread fin and the gizzard shad population being so down. But um, that's what you're seeing out there. You're seeing a lot of, a lot of bait. You can get out there on those dead slick mornings, you see it, it's everywhere. It's crazy how much is out there, but um, uh, good news, fish have got something to eat, you know. Um, Adam did also tell me to pass along to you guys, if you do happen to see any young of the year Asian carp, you know, in the eight inches or less, I believe he said, 
uh, if you can get them, if you can get a hold of them, or you can, if you see some what you think are fry, you know, grab them. Um, you know, I'm gonna say, you know, we've got Asian carp in the system. There's, you know, we're not gonna completely rule out that some of those fry aren't fry, uh, Asian carp. I'm not gonna go as far as a lot of the guys say they're all Asian carp, because I don't think that's the truth. But um, I do think that, you know, there's always that possibility that there's some out there. So if you see any young of the year, you can get them. And I think a lot of people have the misunderstanding that um, young of the year Asian carp look like shad. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, a smaller Asian carp looks just like an adult Asian carp. So if you get those, the best way to get them, if you can get them and get them on, on ice and get them to those guys, he said that they can do a lot of studies as far as um, where they respond and all that good stuff. So um, both agencies, Tennessee and Kentucky, both are, are interested in that. So keep your eyes out, you know, uh, but until then get out there and, you know, enjoy the enjoy fishing, the mayfly hatch, the shad deal. Uh, it's, you know, like I say, it, the ledge fishing's been kind of off this year. It's not been real, real good. But um, another pattern that you want to look for, you start looking for, I've seen it over the last few days, is, and I talked about this some last year, this happened last year, is around the docks. That shad starts migrating to the docks. They start getting up under that shade on these hot days and just a swim jig. Um, you catch a lot of numbers, you know, and also you can take a, like a wacky rig Cinco or something and fish it kind of slow. I'm a power fisherman. I like to chunk and wind and the swim jig that's a six inch divine swim jig bluegill color this also works around the um the uh, mayfly hatch because those bluegill are up there on you know and they're chasing those mayflies and those fish are up there eating that the bluegill colored with a divine swim bait on the back also have a shad color you know because those shad are up around those docks those fish are up there around those docks and just a little divine um shad colored booty tail swim bait on the back of it but that's also been good um mayfly hatch Pop R, top water, walking style baits. The swim bait, it's still working. I've talked about the, the Ignite swim bait, the little Divine swim bait on a jig head. That's still working. You can catch a few. For the most part, it's kind of slowed down, but um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's, um, it's summertime, it's hot. You know, by 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, you can put it on the trailer and go to the house because after that, that midday, it just, it's, it's pretty, pretty slow out there. And not saying you can't still catch a few, but um, it's it's almost miserable being on the water right now first couple of hours in the morning last thing in the evening You know, that's I don't fish much in the evenings But from what I understand there's a lot of what's happening in the morning going on the evening, too But um, if I can help you guys, you know, I'm reach. Um, I think I'm booked through July right now But I'm booking into August right now. So uh, anybody want to get get in on a late hot Summertime bite or if I can help you set up your electronics be sure and shoot me an email at info at brandonhunterfishing.com and I'll see you guys on the water.